2015, Kevin Fowler. In October 2015, country music star Kevin Fowler shared a chilling encounter with a rattlesnake on his Facebook page, accompanied by gruesome images of a friend's hand bitten by a rattlesnake the previous year. Fowler, unapologetic about killing rattlesnakes, aimed his message at rattlesnake sympathizers, asserting that their perspective would change if their children were bitten while playing in their backyard. Fowler's Facebook post detailed his recent encounter with a rattlesnake in his shed, the third such incident that month. He challenged those who advocate for rattlesnake conservation, arguing that they likely hadn't witnessed the aftermath of a snake bite. The post included distressing images of his friend Tommy's hand post-bite, emphasizing ongoing surgeries and rehabilitation. Responses to Fowler's post varied. Some criticized human intrusion into snake habitats, while others defended the importance of coexistence. One comment pointed out the risks of encroaching on the creature's shrinking territories. But despite differing opinions, some echoed Fowler's sentiment that the only good rattlesnake is a dead one, emphasizing the daily challenges faced by those in North Texas. Amid the controversy, someone shared a distressing personal account of a snake bite that resulted in lasting muscular damage. The individual highlighted the adaptability of rattlesnakes, noting instances where the snakes no longer provided warning rattles before striking. Steve Lightfoot from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department weighed in, describing rattlesnakes as secretive, shy, and generally non-aggressive. He advised people encountering a rattlesnake to remain still, avoid sudden movements, and allow the snake an opportunity to retreat, as they're more likely to flee than attack. Lightfoot stressed the importance of education to raise awareness about the behavior of rattlesnakes, emphasizing the need for people to be informed and alert in their surroundings. The incident sparked a broader conversation about human-wildlife interactions, habitat conservation, and the delicate balance needed to coexist with wildlife in regions like North Texas. 14. Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake On May 19, 2023, Sierra Lynn's 21st birthday took an unexpected turn when she was bitten by a venomous snake during a hike in the Mayakachi Creek Environmental Park in Northport, Florida. Known for her leisurely walks while photographing monarch butterflies, Lynn's encounter with danger occurred with one wrong step, as she believed she was bitten by an eastern diamondback rattlesnake, a venomous species. Lynn's boyfriend, Derek Hunter, recounted the harrowing incident, describing how emergency officials swiftly evacuated her from the trail, placing her in an ambulance and then a helicopter to transport her to the hospital. The severity of the situation led her family to fear the worst, with a moment where goodbyes seemed imminent. However, against the odds, Lynn miraculously survived the venomous bite, earning admiration from her loved ones for her resilience. The celebration of her 21st birthday, originally planned for joyous festivities, took place in the intensive care unit as Lynn continued her recovery. The couple now advocate for caution on Florida trails, emphasizing that besides alligators and sharks, the region poses other dangers like venomous snakes and spiders. Hunter suggests using a walking stick to scare off snakes and advises caution with each step, recommending stepping on logs rather than over them to avoid startling snakes. To aid in Lynn's medical expenses, her family initiated a GoFundMe campaign. An update on the fundraising platform indicates that Lynn has transitioned from the intensive care unit to a trauma floor. Her recovery journey includes reconstructive surgery for the bitten leg and rehabilitation to regain the ability to walk. The incident serves as a cautionary tale, warning of the diverse wildlife dangers in Florida, urging hikers and nature enthusiasts to exercise vigilance and take precautions while enjoying the trails. Lynn's story is not only one of survival, but also a call to awareness about the potential risks associated with outdoor activities in snake-prone regions. 13. A Sharp Sting In August 2021, a 21-year-old man named Kevin Murray found himself on the path to recovery after being bitten by a venomous snake during a night hike in Hopewell Township, New Jersey. The incident unfolded when Murray, unaware of the danger, suddenly felt a sharp pain in his ankle and fell to the ground. And to his surprise, he spotted a slithering snake just a few feet away. 
Assuming it might be a harmless garden snake, Murray quickly realized the severity of the situation. So, acting decisively, he snapped a photo of the snake before rushing to the emergency room at Capitol Health in Bennington. This crucial photograph played a vital role in identifying the snake as a copperhead, a venomous species named for its copper red head. Copperheads, while likely to bite, are known for their relatively mild venom, and their bites are rarely fatal for humans. Murray's decision to capture the snake's image proved pivotal, as a herpetologist confirmed the species through the photo. Medical professionals taking immediate action monitored Murray's heart rate in the ICU to ensure the venom wasn't spreading. And fortunately, the venom did not spread, and Murray didn't require anti-venom treatment, which can have long-term side effects. After three days in the hospital, he was discharged and returned home, counting himself fortunate to have no anticipated long-term effects. Dr. Robert Bassett, the Associate Medical Director for Philadelphia Poison Control, explained that venomous snakes are rare in New Jersey, but breeding season can lead to more aggressive behavior. The copperhead, though constituting a small percentage of local snakes, is associated with warmer weather and increased activity. A spokesperson from New Jersey's Division of Fish and Wildlife affirmed that copperheads are found only in the northwestern parts of the state, with no reported deaths from their bites. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, advises anyone bitten by a poisonous snake to remain calm, keep the bite below the heart level, wash the wound, and seek immediate medical attention. 12. Holiday Ruined An Australian holidaymaker, Chris Lang, experienced an unexpected encounter with a venomous snake while visiting Cornwall, UK in August of 2023, leading to a three-day hospital stay. Chris, residing in Melbourne, had successfully avoided Australia's dangerous wildlife, even during hikes in the Australian bush. However, during a visit to his family in Cornwall, he found himself rushed to the hospital after being bitten by an adder on August 17th. The irony of the situation was not lost on Chris, who had spent 13 snake bite free years in Australia. Recounting the incident, he explained that while walking along the coastal path between Land's End and St. Just with an Australian friend, he felt a sharp sting in his right ankle. And to his surprise, he discovered an adder snake latched onto him. Despite his experience with bushwalking in Australia, Chris found the snake's behavior bizarre, speculating that it might have been protecting a nest or stuck in his elastic running socks, potentially delivering multiple doses of venom during the encounter. After kicking the snake away and snapping a photo, Chris and his friend made their way to the nearest road. A helpful stranger with a car drove them back to St. Just. Chris's leg began to tinkle and go numb, prompting a call to emergency services, 111, and he was driven an hour away to the Royal Cornwall Hospital by his girlfriend. Chris collapsed while walking to the A&E entrance, and he remained hospitalized until Sunday. He received two doses of antivenom and underwent monitoring for several days. The swelling in his leg was substantial, and the antivenom made him feel sick. Reflecting on the unexpected snake bite in Cornwall, Chris expressed disbelief at being bitten by a venomous snake in such an unlikely place. His family, especially his Australian uncle, initially thought it was a joke, playing up the common perception that venomous snakes are primarily associated with Australia. The irony of the situation became a source of humor for those involved, emphasizing the unpredictability of wildlife encounters, even in seemingly safe locations. 11. Anita F. Finch In December 1999, the tragic death of Anita Finch, a 33-year-old snake enthusiast in Los Angeles, California, shocked those who knew her. Anita's lifeless body was discovered in her mobile home by a friend and lot supervisor. Known for her passion for reptiles, Anita shared her residence with numerous venomous snakes, piranhas, and other exotic animals. But Anita's trust in her snakes took a devastating turn when one of them, a rare African viper identified as a gaboon viper, bit her on the hand. These vipers, native to western equatorial Africa, are typically sluggish but can strike with remarkable speed. Their hinged fangs, the largest and longest among snake species, can reach lengths exceeding two inches. 
And unfortunately, the snake retained its grip on Anita until the potent venom took its toll. Despite her love for nature and reptiles since childhood, Anita's life was cut short just days before a significant event in her career. She'd applied to become a zookeeper at the Los Angeles Zoo and was scheduled to take her final exam that Saturday. Tragically though, Anita never made it to the phone to call for help and was found a couple of days after her demise. Anita's untimely death serves as a reminder of the risks associated with keeping venomous animals, even for those with a deep understanding and passion for wildlife. Her story reflects the intersection of a lifelong passion and a career aspiration that was sadly unfulfilled. 10. That skin melted off. In July of 2023, a UK maintenance worker, Warren Soulsby, had a terrifying encounter with a venomous snake while on a weed-whacking session in Coldingham, Scottish borders. The 25-year-old inadvertently picked up a beer bottle, only to get bitten by an adder inside, leading to a nightmarish sequence of events. As Soulsby was clearing shrubbery from the street signs, he noticed a beer bottle along the road and decided to pick it up to avoid damaging his weed whacker. However, as he grabbed the bottle by the neck, he felt a sharp pain in the side of his left hand. Initially dismissing it as a thornbush prick, he soon started feeling dizzy and sick. Upon inspecting his hand, Soulsby discovered two puncture marks dripping with blood. Unaware that Scotland is home to adders, the UK's only venomous snake, he didn't immediately connect the dots. It was only later that he realized he'd awoken an adder that was napping in the bottle, causing it to bite him. His colleague noticed the marks and rushed Soulsby to the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh, where a blood test revealed his blood was twice as thick as it should be due to venom. Doctors administered European adder antivenom, transported by four motorbikes from Manchester, as part of a unique therapy to counteract the venom. After spending 72 hours in the hospital and receiving the antivenom, Soulsby was discharged. Photos revealed a sizable portion of flesh missing from his bitten hand. But despite the ordeal, he holds no grudge against the bottle dwelling adder, acknowledging that he had unwittingly disturbed its hibernation. Soulsby now advocates for caution on trails, emphasizing that adders, when undisturbed, prefer to retreat. He warns outdoor enthusiasts to be mindful, as his incident was a result of the snake feeling cornered with only one exit from the bottle, coincidentally intercepted by his hand. In light of his accidental encounter with the bottle-dwelling viper, Soulsby reflects with humor, stating, I suppose I deserved it. I woke one up during hibernation and it was really cranky. We've all been there. 9. Rattlesnake Kill Snake Researcher The snake research community mourned the loss of William H. Marty Martin, an esteemed 80-year-old researcher in August 2022, after finding out that he succumbed to a timber rattlesnake bite. Martin, who'd been passionate about studying snakes since childhood, met his unfortunate end after being bitten by a captive snake on his property in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Despite his age, Martin remained dedicated to his work, making arduous mountain hikes to document and count snake populations in remote locations. Joe Bellari, manager of the Bull Run Mountains Preserve, attested to Martin's unwavering commitment, describing the octogenarian as a challenging companion to keep up with during this semi-annual trek. Known for his expertise in timber rattlers, Martin had made significant contributions to the field throughout his life. In his youth, he discovered an unknown population of timber rattlers in the Bull Run Mountains, showcasing his early prowess in snake research. John Seeley, a rattlesnake researcher who knew Martin for over 30 years, hailed him as a foremost authority on timber rattlers, emphasizing his ability to locate and document these elusive creatures. Timber rattlers, generally docile and averse to human contact, are known to avoid biting even if accidentally stepped on. Martin had previously experienced snake bites in his career, but had successfully recovered. Dan Keeler, a toxicology professor, noted that second snake bites could be more dangerous and the size of rattlesnakes could impact the severity of venom injection. H also plays a role in susceptibility. 
And while rattlesnakes typically avoid humans, about 8,000 people suffer venomous snake bites in the US each year, resulting in 10 to 15 deaths. Martin's unfortunate incident brought attention to the potential risks associated with snake research, even for seasoned experts. In a tragic incident the previous month, a six-year-old boy died after being bitten by a rattlesnake during a family bike ride near Colorado Springs. Fire official Derek Chambers provided essential advice for snake bite situations, stressing the importance of staying calm, lowering the bite wound below the heart, and seeking immediate medical attention without attempting self-remedies like tourniquets or attempting to suck out the venom. 8. Horrible Timing in late 2023, Bengaluru witnessed a tragic incident where the joy of a 21-year-old medical student, Adi Balakrishna, earning his MBBS degree, turned into sorrow just hours after his convocation ceremony. The Sri Siddhartha Medical College SSMC campus, located on the outskirts of Tumakuru, 50 miles from Bengaluru, became the site of this unfortunate event. Adit, hailing from Thrissa, Kerala, was a student of Sri Siddhartha Academy of Higher Education. The venomous snake bite occurred at around 11 pm as Adit, accompanied by his mother and relatives, was returning from the convocation ceremony. Unaware of the snake bite, he reached his residence but collapsed upon arrival. He was then rushed to a nearby hospital, but sadly, there wasn't much they could do, and Adit was declared dead. The autopsy report later confirmed significant venom levels in Adit's blood samples, verifying the snake bite as the cause of death. Despite the joyous occasion of receiving an MBBS degree during the convocation, attended by notable figures like Congress parliamentarian Shashi Tharoor and SAHE Chancellor and Home Minister G. Parameshwara, Adit's life was tragically cut short. Dr. Prabhakara Jian, the SSMC Vice Principal, expressed condolences, highlighting Adit's commendable academic achievements and the shocking nature of his untimely death. Adit's mother and relatives, who travelled from Thrissur to participate in the convocation, were left waiting for Adit's father, who was scheduled to arrive from Italy for his son's final rites. The incident reminds us of the unpredictability of life, as a joyous celebration transforms into a heartbreaking tragedy due to an unforeseen and fatal snake bite. 7. Amazon Delivery Driver's Nightmare A routine Amazon delivery took a dangerous turn in September 2023, when an Amazon driver was bitten by a highly venomous eastern diamondback rattlesnake while dropping off a package at a home in Palm City, Florida, approximately 40 miles north of West Palm Beach. The incident occurred in the evening as the snake, coiled near the front door, struck the driver while she was placing the customer's package down. The Martin County Sheriff's Office reported that the driver, upon being bitten, immediately became ill and was subsequently hospitalized in very serious condition. As of the latest update, she was listed in serious but stable condition. The Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, known for its highly venomous bite, is prevalent in the area. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission describes these snakes as brown, yellow, or tan, with black, brown, and cream diamonds. They typically measure three to six feet in length and can strike up to two-thirds of their body length when coiled to inject venom into their prey. Amazon spokesperson Brandon Barabo expressed concern for the driver's well-being, wishing her a full recovery. The company, along with its delivery service partner, is investigating the circumstances surrounding the incident and emphasizing the importance of drivers prioritizing their safety and refraining from completing deliveries if they feel unsafe. Sheriff's Office spokesperson Christine Weiss provided safety advice, recommending vigilance in snake-prone areas. She stressed the need to look down while walking, especially for individuals using phones or being distracted, as rattlesnakes may not provide a warning before striking. Weiss also cautioned against wearing earbuds that could hinder the ability to hear the distinctive rattling sound made by agitated or threatened rattlesnakes. And to further avoid rattlesnake encounters, Vice advise exercising caution when moving items like planters, pots, lumber, or tree limbs, as these snakes are known to inhabit such places. 
Six, Snakebite at Disney. A family threatened to sue Walt Disney World in 2014 after a snake fell from a tree at Disney's Animal Kingdom Park and bit a boy, allegedly leading to the wrongful death of the boy's grandmother. The incident occurred in October of that year, and the family, residing in Alabama, claimed that the snake had escaped within the park, entering an area accessible to visitors. The family's attorney, Matt Morgan, announced during a news conference that he intended to file a formal lawsuit against Disney for the injuries sustained by the boy and the subsequent death of his grandmother. According to the family, the boy's grandmother, who witnessed the snake bite, went into cardiac arrest and passed away two days later. Disney responded, acknowledging that the boy had been bitten by a snake at the park. However, they emphasized that the snake was wild and not part of the park's official animal collection. A Disney spokeswoman confirmed the incident but stated that the family enjoyed the rest of their day at the park after the boy received treatment from a park nurse. And contrary to the family's claims, Disney asserted that there was no call for an ambulance following the incident. The family's allegations were labeled by Disney as an utter mischaracterization of the facts. The discrepancy in the accounts of the incident led to the impending legal action. The family contended that the snake's escape and subsequent bite were preventable, placing responsibility on Disney for the incident. The tragic outcome of the boy's grandmother added a layer of complexity to the situation, raising questions about the park's safety protocols and the events leading to the grandmother's death. Unfortunately, though, it's not clear if this case ever made it to the desk of a judge. 5. Rattlesnake Selfie A San Diego man, Todd Fassler, faced not only a rattlesnake bite, but also an exorbitant medical bill of $153,000 for his treatment in July of 2015. The incident occurred when Fassler attempted to take a selfie with the snake, resulting in a life-threatening encounter. Fassler required multiple doses of the anti-venom Crofat, the primary treatment for snake venom. The bill included a staggering charge of $83,341.25 for the hospital's pharmacy to cover the anti-venom supply, illuminating the high cost associated with this essential medication. The limited supply and monopoly of the anti-venom manufacturer contribute to the substantial bills faced by snakebite victims. Dr. Keith Boson, the director of the Arizona Poison and Drug Information Center, emphasized the importance of antivenom as the most effective treatment for snake bites. Hospital bills, though negotiable, are secondary to the critical need for antivenom, especially when dealing with potentially lethal snake venom. The report mentioned a case where a snake bite victim in Arizona required a staggering 74 vials of antivenom. The wholesale rate hospitals pay for each vial is $2,500, with a considerable markup for patients and insurance. Between 7,000 and 8,000 people in the U.S. suffer venomous snake bites annually, with approximately five fatalities occurring on average every year. Access to medical attention is crucial for administering antivenom promptly, but delayed treatment can lead to severe damage, visible through swelling, tissue die-off, bleeding problems, and bruises, progressing at a visible pace. Dr. Boson, referring to Arizona as the envenomation capital, highlighted the region's prevalence of treating poisonous reptile and insect bites. And with snakes becoming more daring in drought-stricken states, the likelihood of snake bites may increase. While death is rare due to the availability of antivenom since the 1950s, swift treatment minimizes damage and expedites the recovery process, which can last weeks to months. Boson stressed the importance of prioritizing medical attention over financial concerns, especially considering the potential severity of the consequences, such as permanent damage or amputation. 4. Super Snake Powers In March 2017, Elijah Vaughn, a five-year-old from Tampa, had a frightening encounter with a venomous snake in a Tabari backyard. The incident, where he was bitten on his right index finger, led to four days in the hospital, but Elijah's sense of humor turned it into a tale of super snake powers. Elijah's mother, Tyler Vaughn, 
recalled the scary episode when she rushed to meet Volusia County rescue workers after hearing her son's screams. But Elijah's humor about gaining super snake powers made his mother momentarily forget the fear. Tyler emphasized the incident's seriousness, expressing hope that it brings awareness to other families facing similar situations. The snake might occurred in a jungle gym playground behind a Tabari home. Family and friends collaborated to capture and decapitate the serpent, identified as most likely a pygmy rattlesnake by deputies. Elijah's swelling hand and arm improved after four days in the hospital, but his finger remained sore. Tyler Vaughn lightened the mood by likening Elijah's experience to Spider-Man gaining powers after a spider bite, calling it a story for him to share with friends at school. Florida sees a significant number of snake bites, with over 1,300 children bitten annually in the US, as reported by the Centers for Disease and Control. Florida and Texas lead in snake bites, accounting for one in four cases. And out of the 50 snake species in Florida, six are venomous, including the pygmy rattlesnake. The incident magnified the importance of snake bite prevention. Stephen Johnson from the University of Florida advised leaving snakes alone and maintaining distance. Florida Poison Information Center's Alfred Alaguas noted that rattlesnakes are common in Florida, with most bites occurring from native snakes. While fatalities from snake bites are rare due to accessible anti-venom, 2014 saw 45,000 reported snake bites in the US, resulting in five deaths. And in Florida alone, over 600 snake bites were reported in the last two years. Elijah mistook the snake for a toy under the jungle gym, leading to the bite. He was then promptly taken to Central Florida Regional Hospital and was later transferred to the Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children. Tyler Vaughn expressed gratitude for the professionals who provided excellent care and accentuated that immediate medical attention is crucial in snake bites. 3. Unexpected Visitor in Hotel Room in April 2018, a 34-year-old man from Li Zhao City, southwest China, found himself in critical condition after being bitten by one of the world's deadliest snakes at a hotel in Nanning City, Guangxi Province. The incident unfolded when the man, identified as Mr. Wei, checked into the hotel on April 2nd. Feeling unwell in his room, he sought help from the front desk. However, when hotel staff attempted to enter the room using a master key, they were startled to discover a half a meter long snake dropping from Mr. Wei's right leg of his trousers. The snake was identified as a many-banded crate, also known as the Chinese crate, a highly venomous species that's commonly found in Southeast Asia. Luckily though, a snake expert captured the crate, which was later taken to a wildlife protection center in Nanning. Mr. Wei was rushed to a Guangxi Nationalities Hospital for immediate treatment, but despite receiving an antidote, he remained unconscious in intensive care units. Dr. Zhang Fufu from the intensive care units reported that Mr. Wei was in a coma with no reflex responses. A medical ventilator was used to assist his breathing, and fortunately, his blood pressure remained stable. Nanning police launched an investigation into the incident, aiming to determine how a venomous snake ended up in a hotel room. The circumstances surrounding the presence of the dangerous snake in the room raised questions that authorities sought to address. The snake bite highlighted the potential risks associated with encounters with deadly wildlife, even in unexpected places like hotel rooms. 2. Nightmarish Camping Trip in June of 2023, a family camping trip to the North Carolina mountains took a terrifying turn when a venomous snake bit a four-year-old boy named Jad. Stacy Pollum, the boy's mother, recounted the incident, stating that Jad was playing outside a cabin over Memorial Day weekend when he let out a blood-curdling scream. Pollum, recognizing the severity of the situation, immediately got her husband to bring Jad to safety. A photo taken by her husband helped identify the reptilian culprit, which was later confirmed to be a copperhead lurking near patio furniture. The family rushed Jan to an emergency room, where he began receiving treatment for the copperhead bind to his foot. And according to reports, he received 10 vials of anti-venom treatment before being flown to a Tennessee hospital for further care. 
Pollock shared her ordeal on Facebook, describing the anguish of seeing her son in a helicopter bound for medical help, realizing that he'd reached there hours before she could. Copperheads, known for their hourglass-shaped crossbands, are prevalent throughout North Carolina, constituting over 90% of venomous snake bites in the state, as noted by the NC Wildlife Resources Commission. While copperhead bites are usually painful and treated seriously, they're rarely deadly. In case of a bite, though, individuals are advised to wash the affected area and contact poison control at 800-222-1222. Thankfully, Jad eventually showed signs of recovery, expressing a desire to watch Paw Patrol and to see his best friend. The incident occurred in the Highlands region of North Carolina, approximately 75 miles southwest of Asheville. And despite the family's love for the outdoors, Paula mentioned that it would be a while before she considered camping again, stressing the traumatic nature of the experience. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Danger in the Cockpit South African pilot Rudolf Erasmus faced a harrowing mid-air incident in April 2023 when he discovered a venomous Cape Cobra slithering under his seat during a private flight from South Africa's Western Cape to Nelspring. Erasmus initially felt a cold sensation under his shirt around his hip area and was stunned to find the cobra underneath him. Reacting swiftly, Erasmus decided to turn the light aircraft around and make an emergency landing at the nearest airport in Welcome. But despite the potentially fatal threat posed by the snake, Erasmus prioritized the safety of his passengers, informing them of the situation. And remarkably, everyone remained calm, avoiding panic. Erasmus, recalling the tense moments, expressed concern about the snake's potential to strike passengers, explaining that the Cape Cobra's bite can prove fatal within an hour if left untreated. His decision to prioritize the well-being of those on board garnered praise from South African Civil Aviation Commissioner Poppy Koza, who lauded him as a hero for saving every life on the flight. The incident drew comparison to the 2006 film Snakes on a Plane, known for its depiction of a plane infested with venomous snakes. Erasmus, having seen the movie, humorously noted that he felt like the character played by Samuel L. Jackson, with the expletive-laden tirade playing out in his mind. In defiance of Erasmus's heroics and the emergency landing, though, the snake managed to evade capture upon the plane touching down, raising questions about its current whereabouts. The Cape Cobra seemingly boarded and disembarked the aircraft on its own, adding an unexpected twist to the aviation ordeal. Number 10. Gideon Vorster The professional snake catcher named Gideon Vorster works in Limpopo, South Africa, where he works with one of the world's most dangerous snakes, the Black Mamba. Without treatment, a Black Mamba bite is guaranteed to be fatal and can kill a man within 30 minutes an anti-venom exists but must be administered quickly after the bite happens to avoid lasting damage or death. Vorster and another professional handler had just removed a black mamba from the ceiling of someone's home and were checking it for injuries when the deadly snake lunged and bit him twice on the hand. His colleague rushed him to the hospital where he received the anti-venom on time and narrowly managed to avoid death. But even when someone survives a black mamba bite, the experience is extremely traumatic. Speaking to Newsweek, Vorster said his body immediately began to go numb with pins and needles after the bite, and he became paralyzed as he struggled to take breaths. His hand even swelled to nearly twice its normal size. The snake that bit Vorster was in the process of shedding its skin, which can impair a reptile's vision. This can make the creature feel more vulnerable and make them more likely to lash out. Vorster reported that his recovery was going well, but he was taking a break from snake catching until he was fully healed. Number 9. Jeremy Sutcliffe In 2018, Jennifer Sutcliffe was gardening outside her home in Corpus Christi, Texas, when she noticed a four-foot rattlesnake enter the backyard. She called for her husband, Jeremy, who came outside and chopped the reptile's head off with a shovel. When he went to pick the creature up and dispose of it, the severed head sank its teeth deep into his hand and released all its venom. Jeremy immediately started having seizures 
while Jennifer frantically called 911 and got him into their car. She rushed towards the hospital but couldn't get there fast enough and her husband ultimately had to be airlifted to the emergency room. At first, it wasn't clear whether Jeremy would survive. His kidneys were failing and it didn't seem promising. In a desperate effort to save his life, doctors administered 26 doses of anti-venom and quickly put him on dialysis. They amputated two of his fingers and performed skin grafts in hopes of saving the rest of his hand. Miraculously, Jeremy pulled through and to this day, doctors don't know how he survived. A year after the incident, he was no longer on dialysis but still struggled with some lingering health issues including pain and extensive nerve damage. The near-death encounter left Jennifer psychologically traumatized. Now, whenever she goes into her yard to garden, she's constantly on edge and any slight movement that could possibly be a snake sends her into a panic. Hopefully, things will get easier for the couple as they continue along their path and heal. Number 8. John David Brock Snake handling is a common practice at some Pentecostal churches throughout the US, especially in the southern Appalachian states. But the controversial tradition, which is supposed to be a demonstration of how God protects Christians from danger, has cost the lives of a few people over the years. 60-year-old John David Brock was handling a snake at a service in Jensen, Kentucky back in 2015 when the reptile bit him right in the arm. He foolishly declined medical treatment and instead went to his brother's house where he died from the bite. Brock's death came a little more than a year after the pastor and reality TV star Jamie Coots died from a rattlesnake bite he got during a service in Middlesbrough, Kentucky. In 2012, 44-year-old renowned Pentecostal preacher Mac Walford was also bitten by a rattlesnake and passed away hours later, 30 years after his father died for the same reason. He had been bitten three times before but never sought out medical help. This time, Wolford avoided going to the hospital but was rushed to the emergency room when it was clear he couldn't survive without help. But by the time he got there, it was already too late. These are just some of several snake handling related deaths that have happened in recent years. Unsurprisingly, the tradition has come under fire. Some congregations have been evicted from their rented properties for it and some professional snake handlers have tried to warn the public of the dangers that come along with an untrained person going near a venomous reptile, as if they shouldn't already know this in the first place. Even more concerning, when someone is bitten by a snake during a church service, they almost always refuse medical treatment and just leave the matter in God's hands as a show of faith and trust. Unfortunately, as the examples we've discussed in today's video show, this usually doesn't turn out well for them. But there's only so much that can be done to stop those who truly believe in the practice, even if it's illegal in some of the places where it happens. But the devout continue to put their faith above the law and risk their lives in order to prove their faith. Number 7. Battle to the Death Jenny Hillman was on a walk outside near her home in Queensland, Australia back in 2019 when she came upon two snakes who were caught up in a vicious battle. She pulled out her phone and quickly started filming the tense encounter between a red-bellied black snake and a much larger spotted black snake. Footage shows the red-bellied black snake trying to retreat and fight its opponent off as the brown snake latched onto its body. The larger reptile killed the red-bellied snake and won the battle but had been bitten so many times that it seemed as though it wouldn't live much longer. We don't know for sure whether or not the victor survived since Jenny's viral video cuts off right after the fight. One thing's for sure though, mother nature can be wild. Number 6. Protective Puppy Georgina Richardson's two sons were playing outside their home in Sumter County, Florida in 2019 when the family's 8-month-old pit bull Zeus lunged near her 10-year-old and started wrestling with something on the ground. At first, the boy thought his pup was just playing around with a rope, but it turned out to be a highly venomous coral snake. The reptile bit Zeus four times before he bit its head clean off and swallowed it. Georgina rushed the heroic pet to an animal hospital for anti-venom, but it was too late by the time they arrived and he sadly died that day. All six family members gathered to say goodbye to their beloved canine companion and received a mold of his footprint to forever remember their hero pup. Zeus's death was tragic and devastating, but Georgina credited him with saving her son's life had he not stepped in and fought off the snake, it could have killed one of the children. 
The thankful mother said that she hoped her dog's brave act would help counter negative stereotypes about pit bulls and similar breeds, who are often portrayed as aggressive and inherently dangerous. Number 5. Josh Rose 27-year-old Josh Rose was on a picnic with his kids in London back in 2017 when he saw a three-foot-long adder snake beneath the children's cart. He tried to swat the reptile away, but it lunged at him and bit him on the finger. The next thing he knew, he was paralyzed and unable to speak. Rose collapsed to the ground and began foaming at the mouth as the snake continued to thrash around near the toddlers. He later told the son that he could hear people around him talking, but couldn't even open his eyes to look at them. A passerby drove the snake off with a stick and called for help. Emergency responders rushed Rose to the hospital while working to thin out his rapidly clotting blood as it reacted to the anti-venom. By then, his pulse had dropped dangerously low. Doctors administered anti-venom and admitted him to the intensive care unit for 24 hours. Rose later told the press that he felt like he had gotten hit by a truck, but he was thankful his kids didn't get bit. The adder is the only wild venomous snake in the UK. There have been 14 recorded deaths from adder bites since 1876, with the most recent happening in 1975. While most bites only require mild medical observation, severe cases like roses require anti-venom. The recovery process can be grueling, especially for adults, who sometimes require up to nine months to fully heal. Number 4. Simon Kurat A six-year-old Colorado boy named Simon Kurat was biking with his dad and sister recently when he went ahead of them. Suddenly, his dad heard him yell, Rattlesnake! But before the dad was able to catch up, Simon had been bitten. The frantic father scooped his little boy up into his arms and ran to the nearest neighborhood, where residents dialed 911 after hearing them scream for help. The local fire chief, Derek Chambers, was the first emergency responder to arrive on scene. Simon hadn't gone into cardiac arrest yet, but his condition was dire. Chambers called for a helicopter, and he was flown to the closest hospital. A few days later, Simon sadly gave in to his injuries. His devastated parents and three siblings were left reeling in pain and have been leaning on the grief-stricken church congregation for support through this unimaginably hard time. Around 200 people are bitten by rattlesnakes every year in Colorado, but casualties are rare. The tragedy prompted the state's Parks and Wildlife Department to publish a list of things people should and shouldn't do if they're bitten including instructions for cleaning the bite and a reminder to keep the bite location level with the victim's heart to prevent the venom from spreading throughout the rest of the body. Number 3. Eugene De Leon Sr. Texas snake handler Eugene De Leon Sr. was performing at the Rattlesnake Roundup in Freer earlier this year when a rattlesnake bit him square in the shoulder. He was quickly flown to the hospital where he spent eight hours fighting for his life until he died from his injuries. De Leon had over 20 years of snake handling experience when he received the deadly bite and worked to remove snakes from people's homes, proving that even seasoned professionals risked their lives while interacting with the venomous reptiles. The Rattlesnake Roundup is a large festival that features rattlesnake-themed performances, feedings, and carnival activities. While anti-venom is widely available all across Texas, it has to be administered at a hospital and isn't kept on site. So those who choose to get up close and personal with rattlesnakes are taking their chances on whether or not they'll be able to receive treatment on time if they're bitten. Number 2. Vava Suresh Vava Suresh is a famous wildlife conservationist and snake catcher from India who made a name for himself by relocating dangerous snakes out of populated areas. He had plenty of experience under his belt when he was bitten by a cobra earlier this year in the state of Kerala. He had been called to capture the creature when it sank its fangs deep into his flesh, right above his knee. Cobras are among the world's most dangerous snake species. Their venom isn't as potent as some other snakes, but a single bite can release enough to kill 20 people. Suresh went into cardiac arrest on his way to the hospital and was put on a ventilator. Doctors administered 65 vials of anti-venom which is more than twice the average amount needed for a cobra bite. Because Suresh has been bitten by venomous snakes more than 250 times in his career, the treatment he required was complicated. In fact, doctors warned him in the past that if he continued to get bitten, anti-venom may stop working on him. 
based on how much of it he needed this time around, it seems like that's exactly what's starting to happen. A few days after the bite happened, hospital worker TK Jayakumar told the Hindustan Times that he's now off the ventilator and breathing on his own, and that his condition seems to be improving, but he was still in the ICU. After a week in the hospital, Suresh was discharged with only minor lingering symptoms, including a mild fever. It's doubtful though that a dedicated snake handler will stop his life's work, but another bite could kill him, even if he gets treatment. Number 1. Jay Brewer Snake handler Jay Brewer knew that a 20-foot reticulated piebald python would try to bite him while he tried to move it into a different enclosure at the Reptile Zoo in Fountain Valley, California. The snake was feeling especially protective over some eggs she had recently laid in a nesting box. In a video that he later posted to his Instagram account, Jay's Prehistoric Pets, he told the cameraman, I guarantee at some point she is going to turn into Supermom on me. He also explained that handling the beast involved burning out her energy first. The protective mama lunged once at the cameraman before turning her attention to Brewer, who she repeatedly charged at, even biting his arm in the process. He was wearing a special coat designed to keep him as safe as possible though, but was still left bleeding with visible puncture wounds from the snake's fangs. Luckily for Brewer, reticulated pythons are non-venomous and the injury wasn't life-threatening. Would you rather find a non-venomous snake in your bed or find a venomous snake in your backyard? Let us know which would be worse in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.